This is the revision video for unit B1, the eye. Eyes contain photoreceptors. These are receptors that detect light. These receptors change light into electrical impulses that then pass along the optic nerve to the brain. It is then your brain that interprets these signals and produces the image that we see. The coloured part of the eye is called the iris, with the pupil in the middle. The pupil is the hole in the middle that allows light through into the eye. The iris is actually a ring of muscle that controls the size of the pupil to control how much light enters the eye. The light that enters your eye eventually ends up right at the back of the eye at the retina. The very first layer of the eye at the front is the cornea. When light hits the cornea, it is refracted slightly. This means that the rays of light are bent. This is to direct the light through the pupil and towards the retina. After light has travelled through the pupil, it reaches the lens. Just like the lens in a camera, the lens in your eye has the job of focusing the light. The lens focuses in the incoming light onto the retina at the back of the eye. It does this by refracting the incoming rays of light. The retina contains thousands of photoreceptors that detect light. When light hits these receptors, they produce electrical signals that are sent along the optic nerve to the brain. Where the optic nerve joins the back of the eye, there is no retina and so there are no receptors. This area is known as the blind spot. There is also a spot on the retina, right in the middle, known as the fovea or yellow spot, where there is the greatest concentration of photoreceptors. Which one do you think is the odd one out and why? If we think about this from the perspective of their vision and how they see, then the odd one out is the rabbit. The other three all have forward facing eyes and what is known as binocular vision. But the rabbit has eyes on the side of its head and what is called monocular vision. Monocular vision occurs where animals have eyes on the side of their head. These animals are usually prey animals. Monocular vision gives them the advantage of a much wider field of view. This means they can see more around them and are more likely to spot predators in time to run away. The disadvantage is that they cannot judge distances very well. When animals have forward facing eyes, both eyes focus on the same thing. This is called binocular vision. They do not have a very wide field of view, but they can focus much better and judge distance more accurately. Animals with binocular vision are usually predators who need to hunt other animals. To judge distance, your brain compares the images from both eyes. If the images are very similar, the brain knows you are looking at something in the distance. The bigger the difference between the images, the closer the object. In this example you can see that the zebra's eyes are on the side of its head. This means it can see all around and see any predators coming in enough time to run away. This example shows an owl with forward facing eyes and therefore binocular vision. This helps them to find their prey. Owls have overcome the problem of having a narrower field of vision by being able to turn their heads round and therefore improving their field of view. In order for us to see things, the light from an object has to be focused onto the retina. The eye has to adjust to see things that are close up or far away. You cannot focus on both close up and far away objects at the same time because the lens has to change shape for near or distant objects. This is known as accommodation. The lens has to change shape depending on where the object is that you are looking at because the light from that object may need to be refracted by different amounts. For nearby objects, the rays of light need to be refracted a lot so the lens has a rounded fat shape. For distant objects, the rays of light do not need to be refracted as much so the lens becomes flatter and thinner. The shape of the lens is controlled by the ciliary muscle and the suspensory ligaments. When you are looking at a nearby object, the ring of ciliary muscle contracts and the suspensory ligaments slacken. This gives the lens a rounded fat shape. When you are looking at a distant object, the
the ring of ciliary muscle relaxes and the suspensory ligaments become taut, giving the lens a flatter, thinner shape. There are three vision problems that you need to know about. The first is red-green colour blindness. This is an inherited condition where people cannot clearly tell the difference between the colours red and green, as they are lacking certain specialised cells in the retina. The second problem you need to know about is short-sightedness. People with short sight can see close things clearly, but cannot focus on objects in the distance. Short-sightedness is caused when the eyeball is too long or when the lens cannot accommodate properly for distant objects. This results in the light focusing in front of the retina and therefore the image being blurred. Short sight can be corrected using a diverging or concave lens to bend the rays of light outward before they enter the eye. This means the rays of light now meet on the retina and so the final image is in focus. The third problem you need to know about is long sightedness. People with long sight can see distant objects clearly but cannot focus on things close up. Long sightedness is caused when the eyeball is too short or when the lens cannot accommodate properly for close up objects. This means that the light rays that enter the eye do not meet on the retina and therefore the image is blurred. Like short sight, long sight can be corrected using lenses, but this time a converging or convex lens is used to bend the light rays inward before they enter the eye. This means the rays of light now meet on the retina and the final image is in focus.